Uh, no, uh, empty audience at the moment. First. Yes, 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 uh, totally. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid sitting at the party and not too many got power socket. We came out. Were you at the pain in me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we were 15 minutes late, but. I mean, Jesse could be here. It's now starting. <laughs> Technically, but <laughs> uh, it's just in what room? Right. <laughs> Slightly hard to find. <laughs> yeah. I've ever walked out of a building and had my glasses fog up. <laughs> Welcome to Hong Kong. <laughs> Side, the advice about putting a light jacket for in the shops completely did not apply to me. <laughs> I kind of expected that for, as someone who went through the Scottish winter without turning his heat on that I'd probably be immune to the cold. <laughs> it's the heat I'd have to worry about. <laughs> in a block of flats, but the temp, so I suspect I was leaching heat slightly at my neighbors, but never actually got cold enough that I actually felt the need to heat things up, so. <laughs> Honestly, it's as difficult as I found it to find here. There's no, there's not actually a signpost in either P or Q, anywhere near the P or Q block saying to go up the lift to find the PQ block. Yeah, I looked into the um, conference booklet. No map. <laughs> There's a map. Is there? Yeah. Which page? Um, I only know 
Right, they have a map just to find, just to instruct you how to find PQ. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, yeah, there's a map. It doesn't actually mark mark PQ on this, though. <laughs> no, well, uh, uh, my university, we have the same system. It has two letters. It's between these two. Yeah, letters. I figured that out, Q, but Q. Uh, yeah, but it's not self-evident. The keynote was uh, a little bit running over time, so I guess I will still drink. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I have uh, one of. I have a question, and maybe while we're waiting, we can. Discuss we can discuss it. It's a discussion, so uh, okay. we have not pre prepared much in advance. That's but exactly. This route's hard to find. Yes, <laughs> uh, I think we should wait a bit, uh, some more minutes. Yeah, that's Sorry. good. Hi. No problem. This isn't a very good discussion room. It's <laughs> very much more lecture. Yeah. Yeah, I already okay. told the uh, video man to put the oh. camera here on this side. Yeah, to see everything. Not, not just here in the middle yeah. that we are That's great. Uh, on the screen. I can start 15 minutes later. Yeah, I think it's okay. We only have half of the uh, slot. So. Yeah. Is there any other discussion? No. Discussions that are happening? Yes. I knew that there's. It was followed by empty. I know, yeah. so I didn't know it. No, there's a, there's a, on the table, that column that has something that open the sketch but I think it's in the room, or at least how it looks to me, so... Oh, so if somebody wanted to have another discussion, they could they would do it somewhere? Yeah. Okay. Well, if we need the whole time, then great. If we don't, that's okay, too. I could always do my, the, my lightning talk was planning, if you do have extra time, I could always start my lightning talk early. <laughs> If I grab the uh, images I need right now. <laughs> is the, are the lightning talks in this room? Oh, isn't this a lightning talk? Mm. No, it's not. I don't think it's, it's, uh, yeah, I think it might be different. It's, it's scheduled as a lightning talk, but... Uh, yeah, about an M109. Uh, oh, isn't this a parsley talk? Uh, Wikimania scholarships. Oh, crap, I'm in the wrong room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, we lost one. No, no, you have to stay here. No, no, you have to stay here. Lightning is something M109, and this is support of the tree from Wikipedia in Wi-Fi Center. There's nothing that I can see in this room, so... Can close there. Is there any call not working in this room? Oh, crap. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's fine. It's not cold, so it's yeah. not going to problem. Yeah, it's not cold. It's fair. Muggy outside. I feel like it's gonna start raining in a second. I don't know what the forecast was. There was a cyclone or something. Yes. I heard about that as well. Oh, I didn't. Oh. What did it say? Uh, Silo Philippines. Oh. Philippines. Yes. Oh. Yeah. That's true. I'll use my phone to <laughs> Oh, more people, yeah. It's difficult to find this room. <laughs> yeah, it is difficult.
we'll wait until uh, quarter past. Quarter two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know certain people who wanted to attend or who are on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry? I know certain people who were promising to attend, they're on their way. Oh, yeah. It's hard to find. It would take yeah. me a bit yeah. as well. Yeah. I know where they are, but it's actually on my thing. It's probably in the hatchet. It's like 15 minutes to find them. Yeah. Uh, I could go outside and help them find them. I think once you make it down this hall, it's okay. And we have a map on page seven. Yeah, Which that's true. Please. But it well, it helps, but it's also tricky because it doesn't. Yes, PQ. Yeah, because I was confused by that. It's like, well, do I guess PQ or do I guess Q? <laughs> Is it? So yeah. Do you want to go outside to make announcement like people who are, who want scholarship? <laughs> yes, all no. people who are now here in Saab will receive scholarship next week. Yeah. <laughs> Great, well, we decided. That's what we're doing. Okay, yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> well, that's yours. It's still hot here. Yeah, I don't know, air condition. Um, there was a sign at the door that if you open the door, the air con goes out. Well, they're closed. But I prefer this to the 15 degrees in the other rooms. Okay. The, cool, yeah. the air conditioning can okay. be. Mm. I guess we're just complainers no matter what. <laughs> yeah, people. Well, while we're waiting for people, um, I just started an etherpad to take some notes, and others are welcome to join. I um, put the link on the um, submissions page for this talk. Um, but others can join there, or just verbally, if people have questions or topics they want to discuss during this next time, we can just start creating a list of them. I don't know if anybody has some. Because they were particularly keen on discussing, which is why it came, maybe. No burning topics? I do have one. Yeah. Yes, but I, I have fear of being the first. No, okay. Um, I'm. Um, I'm uh, part of the, I'm a board member of Wikimedia, so Wikimedia South Africa. And we'd be interested to keep or to hold Wikimania in 2015 in South Africa in Cape Town. So we're preparing for a bit for that. Now that is somewhat out of the, the, the central region and for the most people. So then you get with, uh, quite a lot of travel. We believe that travel costs will be okay, it's not the end of the world, but it is, but yeah. Johannesburg and Cape Town are quite big international efforts, but then the question of, of scholarships uh, should be, how do we, how do we solve that, what will be the impact, I mean, going, it's not like uh, if you go further, the travel costs go up, scholarships will stay, so what is the impact of going further on the total budget of the yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, because if, like Donsky's was a, uh, less, uh, less, um, was a little bit further for for the most of, of the people. So only 500 people attended. Hong Kong is apparently good. It's, it's well connected. So a thousand people attended. <coughs> Washington was very well connected. So 1,500 people attended. So there's. That's a little bit yeah. the, the question. Yeah, that's a good one to talk about. Well, it's easy to answer that. Sim the simple travel cost uh, relates to the size of the airport. You, the more airlines you have, you, you have that go there, the cheaper the flight is because of the competition. That's not totally the answer, though, because you think of um, so places like so places like this, Hong Kong, it is the same maybe price for me coming from the US as I would go to South Africa. But there's a lot of people in this region that can come for just 100, 200 doll US dollars. And so the, the numbers are quite high in terms of total attendance. But when you're looking at somewhere like South Africa, unless somebody's on scholarship or has a large chunk of change in their pocket, they're not going to probably be able to attend. So that's a good question. Yeah. You know, we also had. Um scholarship applications for Hong Kong uh, coming from uh, mainland China from $30 mm -hmm. or so. Um, yeah, 
interesting to to read so many applications for me and uh, uh, since I um, have been at four it's my first Wikimania here and I've been at several uh, other Wikimedia meetings I knew already a lot of people and so it was much easier for me to uh, read their applica applications and yeah well, that's uh, yeah. Um, hey guys, we're just going around and introducing ourselves so you haven't missed yeah. anything. So where should we be sitting? Anywhere. So yeah, sit closer, closer, I guess, to the discussion. <laughs> Although the room is not enabled. Yeah, maybe do you mind introducing yourself next? Hi, I'm Katie Chan. I was on the scholarship committee as a volunteer. But halfway through, I joined. As well as being a volunteer at the scholarship committee, I started working for Wikimedia UK as volunteer support. And in that role, I also helped partly join to uh, select the scholarship recipient for the UK chapters and then to help arrange their travel and accommodation and so that was associated with coming here. Oh, okay. I'm here. Uh, I'm in the Wikimedia Bank on the board and I'm in the Epcon. That's my first Wikimedia here. I have been given a scholarship before, but I couldn't join because of the visa issues, but that's completely out of this, this, um, this uh, session. So, yes, I'm here to see more about uh, uh, scholarship in my region, mm -hmm. where not necessarily many people know that not many people can afford uh, to join Wikimania if it goes I mean, beyond Asia. Mm -hmm. In Hong Kong it's not, it's cheap, relatively cheap, but if it goes to like, for, for example, South Africa, for London, <laughs> Russia, Brazil, well, it's outside without, without the scholarship. So um, I'm thinking about uh, more Korea, and from, uh, as I'm from Bangladesh, and this year we have the highest number of Bangladeshi participants in Wikimania, it's four. It's not that lot, but in past was one or two. Mm -hmm. So so I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. Martin from the program from Wikimedia, Wikimedia South Africa. 
I'm Gillian from um, Germany. I'm here on a scholarship. I'm Beppo from Austria and I applied several times for scholarships before, even the German <laughs> chapter and, and so on, and I never was selected. But uh, this year somebody uh, couldn't come, so I came. <laughs> but uh, I have to mention in Austria uh, we have uh, 10 scholarships uh, for our country and abroad. But uh, as I am in the board, I never could apply for my own scholarship. Well, and, and for your chapter, we also have chapters applying for ch uh, chapter board members uh, applied for scholarships in Russia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Did you? Chapter yes, board. for a scholarship. Yeah. From Media Media India, I'm on the board. Yeah. We never That's have any good. funds. Yeah. Um, I'm Michael. This is my second Wikimania. And both times I received a scholarship from Wikimedia Austria. Uh, Manuel, also from Austria, also received my scholarship this year from Wikimedia Austria. It's my first time at Wikimedia and it's thanks to the scholarship committee that I'm here, I think. So I'm very glad to be here and glad to have an interesting discussion now. It's a Kadrin from where I'm the chairman of Wikimedia as well. Uh, I'm Toby. I've lost my voice uh, to air conditioning recently. Um, anyway, uh, it's my third Wikimania, and I've uh, received three so uh, scholarships, and I consider the scholarship as uh, one of the most important activities of the foundation because it guarantees uh, diversity at Wikimania, and this is what makes this conference uh, that great. So I really like to, to discuss this important part of the foundation's work. Where are you from, Toby? Uh, Germany. Hi, I'm Kino Charyan, I'm from Wikimedia India. I've been on the board earlier, so this is my uh, third Wikimedia and two times I've, I've come on the scholarship, the regular scholarship. Uh, I generally encourage a lot of people from my region to uh, apply for scholarship. So I'm here to understand okay, how I can help further, you know, uh, how people to apply for the scholarship. I'm Pranav Karamsi, I'm also from Wikimedia India, currently serving on the board. Um, this is my first Wikimania and hopefully what I'm trying to find out is how we can increase participation from my country. I'm Neta, I'm from India, uh, I'm on the Dublin Scholarship, so I'm here to find out how to know, to apply, well, like to write your resume and stuff, and put your things in, in your scholarship application so as to make it so as to present your first letter and to also to know how to help people to apply for the scholarship in my country. Uh, I'm Taylor Green from China Mainland and this is my first time to attend the Wikimedia. And for many Chinese, I believe it's also their first time to attend the Wikimedia because it sounds really near. And I'm here to see how can we get a scholarship to Sound very far away from now. I'm Lorenzo Loza from Wikimedia Italy. So, time in uh, Wikimedia. Um, Abbas Mahmoud from Kenya. And um, most of the reasons why I want to attend are already been mentioned, so I'm just um, here to join the conversation. Yeah, <laughs> Um, I'm Phoebe Ayers. I, uh, I'm a long-term Wikimaniac. Many of you have corresponded with me over the years. Um, I'm just going to listen for a little bit, and then I have to go to something that I'd like to come and say hi. And our um, volunteer has called about the air conditioning. Oh. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. And one person. Which of the information you get for? Um, Vinny, we were just introducing ourselves, if, and everybody just went, if you want to just introduce yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Uh, I'm Vinny Vinicius from Brazil, and I'm here, I'm, I'm from the Brazilian chapter 2B, and I'm, I edit Wikipedia, and I, I don't know, one more. Sounds great. <laughs> okay. Thank you. If you had any, if, do you have any topics you want to make sure we discuss today? Today? 
work yeah. on it. Okay. I'm here just to understand better the criteria and the, 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 the method. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. And, well, great. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for your time and mental power as we discuss how to do this the best way possible. Um, Martin, would you go through what, in general, I think it would be good, so Martin and Katie both are on the scholarship committee, and so it would be good for them maybe to talk a little bit about the process as well as what they look for in, in looking at an application. What are the things that stand out to them? Before they do that, I'll just say briefly, in terms of this, just so everyone knows the kind of scholarship landscape, the things that, the scholarships that were available for this year and in most years in the past, there were um, full scholarships available for people, so it would be sponsoring the flight, the dorms, all of that. Um, yeah, the food here at the conference, conference fee. And then there were partial scholarships available, which paid for about half of the anticipated flight cost based on your region of the world. So if you're coming from the US, it might be $1,000. If you're coming from China, it might be $100, something you know more relative. And then also a lot of chapters sponsored their own scholarships, and they had various ways of doing it. Most of them were full sponsorships. They would pay for their flight, the hotel, the um, food, and all of that. So there were lots of different types of scholarship options available. Um, and the way we did it was we had one committee that rated all the applications, and then they would give the scores to the different groups that were choosing. So like they would give the scores to Wikimedia Austria who was choosing their group of scholars and so they would use the centralized diverse committees rankings and then they would select from there based on those rankings. Um, so yeah, do you want to go through process? Yeah, except for uh, I think uh, three chapters yeah, who have their own different. process. Um, for example, the German chapters also considering um, their own process. Um, yeah. Yeah, you already heard that um, two of us were part of this, this scholarship committee. Uh, we were elected. I don't know, we, uh, don't really know how we were elected, but we at least applied for this. Uh, there was an announcement on the mailing list, and um, I applied for it, and I became a member of the scholarship committee. Um, uh, as far as I could see, um, it chose people from different places. Mm -hmm. Um, in India or Germany and um, uh, men, women. Uh, so you try to make it uh, as diverse as possible to have um, uh, a diversity of uh, opinions upon these uh, scholarship applications we uh, later had to review. And but uh, we at least had scholarships as uh, uh, I have a scholarship from Wikimedia Germany because um, I'm a board member, so I hadn't go through the scholarship process um, that also applied for uh, most of the other scholarship committee members. Um, was some some of them were not allowed to apply for the scholarship. For example, the Indian guy who was a bit sad that uh, uh, in the end he could not attend Wikimedia because. Um, he, he, won't, he weren't allowed to um, apply for a scholarship, but he was in a scholarship committee. But that's, of course, um, um, reasonable not to uh, be in a committee and to get a scholarship at the same time uh, from this very committee. Yeah, um, so just to put in, so at the be when the committee first decided, when people first decided to join the committee, they agreed um, to a conflict, a conflict of interest, basically saying, okay, knowing that I'm on the committee, I will not also apply for a scholarship, given that there's some conflict of interest there. Um, but the committee all, it was a discussion, it wasn't, they weren't, it was, do we think, yeah, we talked about it before, of is this a good way to do it, and the committee all said, yes, this is. It was specified as, we the tier for this, you're not allowed yeah. to Yeah. You knew it can't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then um, there were um, two fa uh, phase phases, two, uh, phase, yes. um, well, how the process worked out. Um, and first, the thing, well, before, first we had an uh, advance, a discussion how to do the process. There has been a process in the last years, and 
Unfortunately, we haven't had enough time uh, to um, change everything and uh, to make it better, uh, much better. What we want to do now, which is why we are here to talk with you, how to make it better. And so um, we used more or less the system of the last year and changed some minor parts. And uh, so there have, have, have been two phases. One, um, the first one, when you applied, um, we checked to whether it's a valid application or an invalid application. So if uh, the wrong language was uh, added or um, just nonsense or um, you have no, have no uh, contribution to the Wikimedia movement at all, we uh, haven't put this application into the second phase. And um, we got in this year I think 1,200 applications mm -hmm. and 700 went to the second phase. Mm -hmm. and. So we receive, so we had around yeah 1,200 applications, but a lot, and a lot of those obviously 700 at least were good applications. But there are a lot that people will just you know click the link to the scholarship form, and then maybe it's blank, maybe it just has their name, maybe they maybe they answer some questions, but then don't agree to our like the, the there's agreement boxes. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so it's, a, so it's a very light screening to get to phase two, but we yeah. still screen just to get out and kind of more the spam type applications. So, um, and all of us, I think we were a team of nine people um, who were allowed to vote on the uh, applications. And the we, all, all, we all went through 700? Yes, uh, up to seven. So for the first phase, yes. And for the second one, we um, uh, had a discussion um, which uh, rituals we want to work on. So we uh, split the workload uh, among us, and um, each of us had two or three regions to cover. And um, of course, uh, we are allowed we are allowed to uh, do more regions uh, if we have enough time, but um, we were supposed to do at least these three uh, regions so that uh, each uh, applicant has at least three votes. Um, while in the last year we had some more problems uh, when the committee um, has not
just do, they might just go through the list in the order that people apply. So they might be comparing very, very, very different people in the different regions would have maybe different cutoff points. So the top 10 people from Europe um, might have lower or higher scores than maybe the top 10 people from uh, South America, for example. It's still difficult. Uh, still difficult. The, the regions to small people. Um, um, yeah, we had uh, the regions. We have also uh, have discussions. How, so we we had uh, discussions for the reason the regions and um, how many percent of the uh, total amount of scholarships. Um, should go to these very regions, and um, we have to, uh, have to have in mind that uh, it's cheaper from uh, Asia to go to e Asia, uh, while it's uh, more expensive from South Africa to, to go to the Dominion Hong Kong. And so well, we finally had a decision that the uh, sponsor a share and included also the uh, Australian part um, with 30%, and most of the other region would have to 20%. Um, Europe, for example, only got 10%, although they're probably the most active as the editors, um, but also the most active um, chapters and uh, ch uh, people who. Uh, chapter also um, gave out scholarships. Um, these people were given to the chapters, uh, the chapters picked the, their uh, candidates, and the 10% per year, for example, only apply for uh, these people who have uh, not uh, no chapter who covered their travel costs. Um, that's the, the reason the, the behind the um, percentage we finally uh, decided upon. And another part of the the discussion has been in the scholarship committee uh, what are the criteria we should uh, put uh, we should uh, request uh, from people and um, this year we have a new uh, part. Um, we uh, ask for their English competence, or whether they can speak English and understand English. We have a crazy question, and I preferred to uh, preferred to remove or at least change this. Um, we ask about Hong Kong food, which Hong Kong food you prefer, um, but. I think 98% of all applications have, have been in English anyway, so uh, uh, we could check their English uh, from the um, <coughs> from the other three other questions. So, but uh, on the other hand, um, we haven't had uh, we had uh, uh, applications which were very very long um, with um, uh, huge texts about almost everything people did. Um, in past, even if they had only 100 or 1,000 edits, and uh, people who applied with hundreds of thousands of edits, um, who wrote just a uh, few uh, points um, that they are an admin or a long time editor, and that's it. Um, it was quite hard for us to, to judge these comments and to reflect it all the time um, um, looking at their real contributions. Um, so it was also important, it's important for a scholarship applicant and that, that they um, write about their work. It's not, it's not, we have, um, each of us had at least 200 applications to read. And um, you know, if you don't tell us what the what you did and why you should attend the conference. Um, we cannot, uh, we don't have so much time to uh, look at your contributions and um, 
see what you've done and if you have uh, if you have, should get a scholarship or not. So um, at least for Germany uh, which I'm most interested in of course since I'm German. Um, we have a long time contributors um, who um, should have gotten a scholarship but haven't gotten one because uh, their, their uh, application was so awful that uh, we, yeah, I, I mean, I know the person and I know how uh, that yeah, I could really to put in one hour of prosa writing. Yeah. I mean, how can they expect, uh, let's call it, a thousand years to get a thousand years from the foundation? I yeah, mean, yeah. Let's be honest. Don't ask me. I'm wondering yeah. too. Yeah. So exactly. So we had, we had a scholarship committee uh, for the conference in a couple of years yeah. back. We had 7,000 applications yeah. and we gave about 98 scholarships. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of long time experience still get and they got really angry. Yeah. What they didn't realize is they put their name and that's it in the application. Yeah. It's also a problem with the non English speaking countries. So they don't have the general practice of writing about long long, long, long form. So, how do you tackle that? Do you go beyond that and see the real contributions? Yeah. We do understand that I think primary language is English. So, well, it will come towards that 10% English score. We do expect at least you need to talk about what we've done with the meeting with the local It doesn't have to be a beautiful essay or um, journalism piece. So at least you can what good it what's I've done based on this review and then this what we could do with it. It doesn't have to be how about as a child that but you need to at least place what kind of things you've done or what kind of things you want to achieve coming here. So a few words. I understand those. I've, I've seen people, especially from India, I've actually helped a lot of people find an application. And when they came up the first draft, it was nothing. And they also ex they expect people to know, them, know their contribution. Then I had to actually explain them to improve it. In the previous part, I've, I've helped many people to find the scholarship yeah. application. Yeah. But generally, the, I see the trend from other specific countries like India or even subcontinent that. Uh, they don't write a lot about themselves of the contribution. They don't even recollect the contribution that they would have done in the, like, say, one year. Okay. So, well, one it's, it's not culturally acceptable to speak so much about themselves. Yes, so, yes. So, yes. That's so, a yeah. So, now, if you for instance, in the scholarship last year, so last year, right? Or two thousand eleven. Okay. So, I noticed, like, uh, even when we've done for instance, a few person still in scholarship. And they don't even, they don't have the Wikipedia characters. So that's something. No, no, that was a pretty good thing. Oh, what? It's a pretty good thing to have a to be able to apply to this country. No, but I mean, it, it, maybe it was, it was not a requirement, but the thing is, I mean, uh, I mean it's uh, not that like uh, a person who wants to be a Wikipedia even should have a Wikipedia account. So it's maybe we also might have low. Possibility of this person coming into the Yeah, I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. So it's and and about the clinic scholarship, I mean, as Martin said, that uh, we, got, we get a lot of information and applications say from this and uh, we can do that. But the thing is, if we uh, verify this information, that uh, if they really did this, yes, I mean, like coupled with the uh, also, uh, database that we have. Yes. No count since we that day. They just take them at their word. I mean, like, if, if someone can have a thousand of some but the three dollars, I know it's yeah. difficult to uh, yeah. verify them, but some other, uh, I mean, there are points on like uh, being in a chapter's uh, position or something. Mm -hmm. So, some things need to be verified, and also other things like uh, when uh, someone can, the questionnaire. So, I think to be more wide and uh, so uh, someone uh, can give a specific answer to specific questions, not just some ger generic answers. So add more specific questions in the actual application? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So I mean, we are just only the real person capable of answering these questions. We just have like general things that they can 
We just had uh, three questions. Uh, one about the activity in the Wikimedia project, one outside of the Wikimedia project, uh, one about the interest that in um, Wikimania and the Wikimedia movement in general. And, uh, Good question. Well, yes, if you have, uh, I mean, that, that the only criteria, criteria we as a committee also have. So um, we, 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 we're supposed to score between zero and four points. And um, if you have a person with 50,000 edits and 200,000 edits, um, four points being very active, both of them are very active, but they're not still not comparable. Um, and um, so we have to uh, make a loan uh, system for ourselves how to judge people. And uh, I have a look a bit um, how other scholarship um, committee members scored people. Um, it was very di differ uh, different how, how um, the, the members scored people. Um, but of course, uh, if, if you have a person with uh, um, Alice and the, that application where nothing is there is inside, um, possibly you can uh, have, a, have a look at the user page and uh, there's not, not written uh, either. So um, you get fewer points than a uh, person with 50,000 edits and uh, it tells uh, us uh, about featured articles or whatever. But um, uh, you have to have a system. And, the yeah, system is near to four points for these three questions. questions. Now, at least it didn't allow me to um, work um, as I wanted to work, uh, to, to be as um, uh, as fair as possible. I have no doubt about your work. Yes. Yeah. Like, I mean, the information, uh, some, if someone writes an essay, yeah. It shouldn't be like that. So maybe you can force that um, the, the write them in bullet form. So a specific format. So if you I, only I, consider for I you don't know, something yet. I don't I mean it's up to you to make to convince you have to sell yourself to the guys on the other yeah. side of the computer. Not that's not me, but it's also up But if you will make it yeah. too easy, you will get more and then so yeah. Yeah that point. Yeah, I would like to second uh, this point because um, I, d I even think there should be a, a separate criterion, like uh, one or two points for effort put into the application, because um, it's a very good indicator um, of how the person will uh, contribute to the conference. I, I think if the scholarship is only merit-based, it uh, would be uh, a disfavor to the conference because people who are eager to join it uh, regardless of, or not regardless of course, of their former uh, uh, contribution to the project, but um, regardless of their, their edit count, for example, because that's just a number which can easily be tripped. Um, I, I think there should just be consideration also for the, the effort and the uh, interest in the actual conference, because the person who puts a lot of effort in uh, the application is probably to also contribute more to, to the conference and to the uh, exchange. One point, I like second, second as well. And um, in the last years, we, uh, we haven't had the possibility to score points or indicate that people have also uh, made us them Submission for uh, Wikimedia. Um, this year we have an extra checkbox uh, where we could uh, uh, separate these people from the others who just want to uh, listen but still care. But um, uh, I thought about um, people who uh, have been at Wikimedia and should uh, share their knowledge and their experience. Um, they at least. Submission. Um, uh, while new Wikimedians or new Wikimedians or uh, uh, they uh, didn't need to uh, 
do that. Um, select the, the all about and maybe change the system to you know, splitting the amount of scholarships to people who um, just want to listen and people who want to share their experience by uh, submitting a presentation. Because uh, the last years we, uh, we had an amount of 130 scholarships and uh, people with more merits uh, got them, while people who wanted to talk um, in the presentation uh, haven't got a scholarship uh, and complained uh, to me or uh, to you, you know, um, that uh, their submission was accepted, but they haven't got a scholarship um, to attend the meeting. Um, I think that's a problem, and I think that uh, should be solved. Would you agree or? Yes, absolutely. Maybe you can reserve a part of the number of advance uh, for the submission that is good. So the submission acceptance uh, comes at a later stage. We have got actually reserve a particular number of scholarships for the good uh, submission that was actually accepted. It would be a, I was part of one of those last year where I had a submission which is accepted and I didn't get a scholarship. Um, Going back to the conference, we had in India, what we did was uh, 25 scholarships were basically kept aside to speakers who did not get scholarships. So, so certain veteran Wikipedians who did not get the scholarship because they basically left the form blank, but they had speaking slots, we made sure they got the scholarship via the speaker's box. That would have to be this deadline for submitting talks earlier? No, that, that would have been later. later. The so server... Said, uh, the, in terms of fees, uh, if you submit a talk to accept it, don't get scholarship, and then prove that you get scholarship among people who make mania, you don't have enough time to apply for fees if you need it. Yeah, the visa thing is hard. You have to apply if Hong Kong wasn't so bad, but other places so, you have to apply quite early. Um, this year. Maybe you need to then have the, the whole process going slightly earlier. Yeah, so that you have a round one and a round two. It's not so Because you know, a lot of other things, sorry, a lot of other things that happened was uh, that, you know, the organizers got blamed. One of the things that we decided was that, uh, you know, only the scholarship committee would have access to the scholarship applications so that no one will accuse us of bias. Then after people came and said, your chair, you should have had a look. I was like, you know, if I have a look, you say they have conflict of interest and I'm promoting bound people. If I don't have a look, you say you didn't have a look. Well, I think that's a very important point that the whole process should start earlier because it simply saves cost. Yeah. It's the same time last year in Washington um, where the flight costs would have been, for, for me, for example, 30 or 40% cheaper. In this case, now, I would have felt for half the price if I would have had the scholarship two months earlier. Uh, when did you find out about your scholarship? Uh, when was that? May, maybe? Yeah, I think maybe. And uh, that's uh, three months before. If it's five or six months before, I fly for half the price. Uh, it's like that. Yeah. I think that's the place for most people. Okay. Well, um, that uh, uh, applies for chapters who only give an amount of money to their scholarship recipients, while the Living Media Foundation covers the five months. But the they, foundation would also save yeah, money. So, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. They, they, they would sh save yeah. money and, very respectively, it uh, uh, would allow more people to attend uh, the yeah. conference. The, the budget, uh, and, and it would allow it much better for a mechanism to consider submissions because that's really the most important point uh, that has been made so far that we really should take uh, into account next time that uh, you have to install something like a, a guarantee that a person uh, that does not get a scholarship but uh, makes a very good submission to the conference yes. has a second chance yes. of, yeah. in, in some way yes. because, yes. I, because, because the whole check yeah. on quality of submission yeah. is at least as thorough as your check on quality of, of, of the scholarship and it could be because now they will write a fantastic text about why they should come to Ukraine instead of make, making a fantastic submission yeah. Yeah. I've seen actively yeah. Just you were on seven, you were second round, seven hundred submissions left. Yeah. yeah.
I'm not sure if really so I'm probably Yeah. That's a good that's a good idea. We can talk about it. One but in terms of making the scholarships happen earlier, so this is something we've thought about our at least we've thought about a lot and wondered about. Because logistically I like can't quite figure it out. Because the way it is now is that the scholarships are supposed to open to apply at the beginning of so like January first. And I think that was a little bit delayed this year, but not too much. So then it's open for six weeks for people to apply, so mid and February. <coughs> and then the scholarship committee, they went pretty quickly, but it still was, you know, almost mid-April before, so like another six to eight weeks before all of the applications were judged because they were very thorough. Like you guys were doing a lot. It, it's hard. You don't want to rush it because then it becomes a, oh, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, you know, like really fast, and that's unfair to the applicants too. So if we move up the, if we move up the scholarship date, if we open it up earlier, then that would mean it would have to open up in, you know, either November or December, which is only in that, I mean, that's in three months from now. And also it means it's during holiday season, um, which could be okay, but also could be hard for people in certain kind of Maybe have more time because of it could be, if they have internet in their home and they're not using a school vacation. You were deciding on the venue for next year, for it, for instance, in uh, like the first of May. Uh, yeah. This year, it was decided that London would get it. Yeah. If you would start it on, on one week later, it's on. Yeah. It's, it's like it's a little, almost it's, one year earlier than it is yeah. now. Yeah. No, that's that's true. I think venue. I will still say I think venue slightly different than people, just because this time next year we could have a wonderful new Wikipedia that just started editing it. You know, November or something like that. And so I, I so do. So you can apply for 2015. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. You could wait. I, yeah. I still fear. So this is actually another balance that our committee constantly had, and we talked about it only a little bit here. Um, but we're even, I think, we're confirming this balance, this bias, and it's part of this conversation when we're saying we should open up a second round of people that have submitted. The only people that will submit a talk are ones that are have come to Wikimedia before or that are very competent speakers and perhaps know Wikimedia media really well. But not very many new people or like fresh blood <laughs> would do that sort of thing. So part of our conflict, in, not conflict, but like a in, internal conflict in our committee is how do you look at two applications of somebody that is very experienced, that has come to many things, that does add quite a bit of value at the conference, and yet, um, we want to have new participants. We want to open the doors to more and more people. And so, yeah, we had a. We were always trying to make sure. Okay, do you give? And I'd actually be interested in people's opinions on that because it was, you know, do you give. If you have two people whose scores are pretty close and one received a scholarship last year, do you prioritize the other person or not? And how, you know, how do you try to balance such things? A lot of people pay the money to many people and then now have or what this person can afford. Uh, we, we also discuss whether uh, the people who have, have been at uh, Wikimania before should be penalized um, uh, in uh, part uh, in media activity. But if, if they have done that, uh, looking from, for example, uh, South America, the uh, will not have gotten scholarship, uh, and that will have been unfair too, uh, because uh, they are active and they, they want to participate. And I believe we should split between experience and actors, and we should uh, add a point that uh, question that uh, uh, we should ask them for them to. Uh, Give a presentation, submit so a presentation. Now, new ones who want to get into the deep into the media movement and want to learn more, more uh, about it. Yeah, I, th I think splitting the budget might be an idea. You already did it uh, region wise, mm -hmm. uh, apparently last year. And maybe you should do it for experienced users and others, I don't know. And also split like 10 or 20 percent for submissions that uh, for, for people who submitted but did not get a scholarship so far. And then maybe those people would even uh, agree to pay half the cost 
uh, if more presenters could, uh, could come this way. I, I think there are ways and they are feasible if you if you split the budget somehow. Yeah, that's a good idea. What's the possibility of increasing the budget? <laughs> yeah, the budget, it has increased a little bit year, at least every year that I've been involved in except for this year it didn't increase. So when I, I think my first year it was 100000 and then the next it went to 115 and this year it was 130000 But actually, and so then for next year, uh, London, it's $150,000. Yes, but how can you? When you're looking at London, the cost of living is quite. So it's good that we increase. So we won't probably pay for more people, but we'll have more money. So it means so that's actually good though, because I had to fight for that to say we need at least this number of people going again, and so I need more money to do it. So there's no chance of increasing that number. The only place, not that number from the foundation, the only place it might increase, which is what happened this year too, is um, for chapters. So some chapters might increase what they budget for scholarships, or and most of them only give money to their specific areas. So for, for India, if you're not doing scholarships, it might not help you. But this year, Germany did do, they said, okay, we have more money for scholarships, and we, we know we spend a lot on Germans, and so we want to help fund other people too. And so they, um, just gave it to WMF to be like, put it in your pot and we'll help cover additional. So we were able to send like six more people from other areas of the world. It's really nice because I met someone from Brazil who said that she was funded by Germany. You know, that, that actually, uh, you know, it's a lot of goodwill in the end. Yeah, I, I think that's part of why they did and wanted to increase the diversity, which I think is, yeah, one of the we can make it um, uh, how can you even have a, a fixed budget for, for scholarships? You, you're, uh, the, the foundation is awarding full scholarships, and then um, how do you find out before uh, how much you, you have to spend? Yeah, you don't know exactly, but you make estimates. So I looked up, so I worked with our travel department to come up with the estimated costs from all the areas of the world of what it would be for a plane ticket, plus the local team said, okay, it's about, I don't know, $40 a night for a person to stay here. Okay. And so then I could say, okay, to fit in $130,000, we can approximately send eight people from South America, seven uh -huh. people from. Could you tell us how much, on average, you, you spent on the full scholarship? Uh, I don't have the updated flight costs, but I can, but it was, I mean, it's probably around, this year, the average worldwide was probably around 2,500. Really? Per person? From, pretty much. From average. I would, really? yeah. pretty from South America, the flights were, I mean, over yeah. $3,000. Yes. And we even have. even the U.S. and Europe, the flights were like $1,500. From the, from, 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 the, from, the from the U.K. Okay. From from the U.K. A budget for individual food scholars was $1,500. But it's, we actually spent over that, so it's 2500 U.S. per scholarship. It was really expensive this year. Yeah, for the, especially for uh, South America. Yeah, South America was the most free. South America sucks. I have the stats here. We have 65 full scholarships, 31 partial scholarships, and um, um, the total cost uh, we expected were $127,000. And I think here. It's more. It's more. <laughs> I had to like go to my boss and be like, we're going to end up spending way more than this. And it's actually been fine because there'd be some people that couldn't end up coming so we could repurpose that money. But it, all of the costs went up. Uh, and, and how is this um, uh, connected to the to the venue? Because of the, there was this question from you around how this will possibly affect uh, your, your, your budgeting if the, the uh, Wikimania 20, uh, 2015 is held in, in Cape Town. Uh, is there I mean, you said it, it went up from, from last year when it was in, in D.C. Uh, do you, uh, is, it, is it cheaper if, if Wikimania is holding in Europe or North America because we have the most contributors? Because we have what? Because mo mo most of our contributors come from Europe and North America. Cheaper to attend? Uh, no, uh, cheaper for the community. Cheaper for the foundation. Depends on yeah. oh. depends on when the foundation is very. Oh, this is very small. 
people some IKEA problems. Yeah. It's not only Wikimedia Deutschland. Some of them are giving the money to Wikimedia Foundation, to the central system, uh, to hire people. Some of them are sending by ourselves, you know that. Um, uh, I'm from Wikimedia Poland, so we are addressing some money to people from Eastern Europe to uh, Western Asia. Uh, basically, so they can come up here from places where there are very tiny chapters or there are no chapters whatsoever, so uh, they can apply to us. There's always some sympathetic people to come here, and this is a great pleasure to have them, to have them here. Um, uh, the problem is with Hong Kong that Hong Kong really drained us. It's really drained us, and I know we have already several different difficult talks with people within the community, uh, people. Uh, uh, just contesting, contesting the current board uh, about the, the issue that our travel expenses, that this is the big factor in the Wikimedia Buildings budget. And it's a great pleasure to know that the next one will be in London, so at least I don't know, our travel expenses will be a little cheaper. I don't know about accommodation though, because London's crazy expensive. Uh, second thing is, I don't know about the travels, this uh, 2,500 uh, number is pretty high, I think. 1,500 to travel from Europe to Asia is a pretty hefty price. I know that Hong Kong is particularly expensive, but uh, when Qatar Airways, things like that, entered Europe now, you can go even well, level 1,000 to, to That's yeah, possibly one thing you can do is try to adapt to the airlines. So probably there is some room, probably there is some room for improvement. Yeah, um, I can, and I, so, and also to be clear, I think that number is approximately right. I really right. But I'll actually look up, I can look it up once we have everything, all okay, the numbers in. Okay, okay, that's fine. Um, I two more but things. But I mean, don't go, like, quoted that number everywhere, but citation I've been, I've been writing politely. And uh, about <laughs> Europe, there is this thing that when you're in Europe and you don't have a fund, uh, funding from your chapter, then you're really screwed because I don't know how many uh, places the Wikimedia Foundation enters to Europe, which is the main, probably main community place. There are three places. Ten percent. Ten percent of scholarships. Ten percent so of about scholarships. Six. I remember that last year something was free. It was pretty funny. I was told that there were precisely three people awarded with the scholarship from Europe. It was ten percent last year okay. too. Free from the Wikimedia Foundation yeah. Yes, true. Precisely. <coughs> Otherwise, there would be very little. And then you have Wikimedia UK. Last year, Wikimedia France, Wikimedia Deutschland, and then a few others. There are lots of countries in Europe that don't have chat. Yes. And those yes. are the ones that get the spots. And there's also the question of some people don't get involved with the chapter of yeah. political reasons, or they don't get on well with the chapter in their country. If we only give scholarship, if we don't give scholarship to people because there's a chapter in their country, then they could never come to the community yeah. because their chapter will never fund them. But if there are chapters without budgets. And, yeah, and those are the ones that would be up for the funding. But I mean, their chances are still the same as other places. So I'm looking at acceptance rates right now. And if you include the, um, so overall acceptance rate from WMF, for the people, and these are for the people that made it to the round two, so like non spam. It's about 20%. Chapters accepted about 38% of people that qualified for theirs. So, Europe overall, um, if you include both the ones WS sponsored and chapters, it has about a 36% acceptance rate, which is higher than any other area of the world because there's so much funding. Um, which isn't, I mean, that's, which is good that more people can come, but it also is hard because it's like, I know six, six is a low number, but only six people from, that's the same number, percentage of people that would be coming from, um, what's the, Af all of Africa, which has no chapter scholarships available to them, or all of the Middle East, or all of the United, or North America. So it's, it is, a, it is a low, they're all low numbers, which is the sad and hard part about all of those. Um, yeah. So what percentage of the applicants? Yeah, they have been awarded the scholarship, but they couldn't make it. Uh, uh, that's a good question. I would have to check after this. The reason I'm asking, I, I'm not sure of this year, but at least the previous year, I have seen at least one or two applicants for media who couldn't make it. Yeah. So how does the fund, go, uh, will it make it to the some other person? Usually. Or? It depends on when they drop out. So this year, we had a, a set of people that received it that then said they couldn't come. And the, 
we had a wait list of people from all the different regions. So actually everyone on our wait list ended up being offered the spot to come. So we had, but then there's people that maybe just like two weeks ago emailed and said, can't come anymore. And sometimes, sometimes it was them being irresponsible, but often it's their government, like they won't be able to get, they, they just, the password didn't come. Or I have one that goes in that came in Portland, but that's why I just used, they felt ill. So yeah. It's too close to get to someone else. So the kind of might be had uh, 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 the all of us were facing visa issues, and all of us, except one, uh, got the visa, but we made it on the day that we are traveling. So, I know, that's in Alexandria, all the issues, because it's quite far, all Arabs people are going to be able to take it from So that's actually when, um, I think it was YouTube that was saying, you know, we should be the advocates of location, because of diversity, so the way our team came in was we had where I have done advocacy was more about the visa issue of like, we, we shouldn't have Wikimedia in, like it's really hard if we have Wikimedia in a place like Washington DC where a lot of the global south just can't yeah. come because like that, the visa. That's true, well, that's one point. Uh, and you almost have to consider that the uh, holding of Wikimedia has an impact on the region. Mm -hmm. It goes through the press here. Uh, people become aware of the Wikipedia movement that normally wouldn't. Um, yeah. And that's why it's important to, to spread the Wikipedia around the world, to, to go to a region that you haven't been before, to raise awareness of the movement. That's not only for, that's for, the, for the people that know Wikipedia already and come here. So if there are people living in the Antarctic, you can make it there. Is anybody in here on the Wikimedia jury? Can you hear you? Uh, How many people are on the Wikimedia jury? Like, you know, like the people Do you take, I don't, sorry to interrupt you, but, um, so one of the things that we've been talking a lot about is how to balance the the value of Wikimedia on a specific region, so maybe like awareness is really important in a specific region in the world, but it's really taught and removed, and how to balance the cost implications of those types of things. I'm sure you talk about it as a jury, but I'm not yeah. sure how that happens. I mean, it's hard, right? Like, we do talk about it, we also talk about the idea of rotation, like not having, you know, two conferences in Europe back to back. But there's always been this tension between those discussions and who bids, right? That's true. So if only European teams bid, then what are you going to do? Um, but I think like we're sort of progressing towards trying to figure out some system of rotation. So like, so we know kind of what areas are um, possible for Wikipedia, or like would be used for Wikipedia in any given year. But there's a big argument between that and the, like the people who have planned for the game for the years. Because on the one hand, people are like, no, if you have a good community and you want to bid, you should bid, right? Like regardless of rotation. And other people are like, well, we're never going to go to Europe twice in a row. So, <laughs> so I don't think that debate is totally resolved. But yeah, we of course will talk about it. Yeah. Um, and I think just in general, like the visa situation is the same way. Like, if, if a country will not allow visas from somewhere, right, then that's a problem, right? And it's, I think it's a showstopper, actually, if it's a big enough issue. So, I mean, the U.S. is right on the line, right? Like, I think it's almost, I won't say impossible, but, like, I'm very hesitant about having the visas in the U.S. because of the visa issue. As an American. Also, the scholarship, the WFO scholarship does not pay for the visa amount. So it's like if I'm a UK and if I want to apply for a US visa, it's like 50% chance and I have to pay from my own pocket. Like I need to pay like 50 US dollars. It's like a lot of money when it comes to young and money. That actually. Then we, all, we, we should also travel to the nearest embassy, which is like maybe 500 kilometers or so from Korea still. Yeah. So, it's, so people may just refuse a scholarship just because. Yeah. They are not sure who it is. And that's actually something we changed. So in for Haifa 2011, that was true that we wouldn't pay for any incidental costs. Um, and then we changed that policy last year and for this year too. So if you needed help with visas, you just it wasn't it wasn't given to you, but you could ask for it and then you would get it. It would, we wouldn't screw. So if you if you were on it, but we, it was on an honor system to, for you to say I actually need help both for travel and visa. And we gave we gave quite a bit of money to people in different areas. But maybe we should make that more obvious so people know 
thing that. Sorry, one thing not directly with scholarships, but uh, you just mentioned it, uh, maybe but actually it's addressed to you. Uh, I know about the issue in uh, Milan, uh, for instance, all the Wikimedia Philippines was, uh, couldn't be there except for Josh because actually no young Philippine person will get a visa from Italy because there is already at least 100,000 or 200,000 uh, Philippine people working on the black, uh, working that way on the other way. Uh, in Italy, so they, their visa submissions are simply denied. And probably the same happens in the United States and many countries. And in London, I know that people from, I don't know, Russia and many other places will have a very difficult time to get the visa to the non Schengen uh, United Kingdom. So, so, is there any place to, or any possibility for Wikimedia Foundation to actually work with embassies? And and such institutions, so uh, these people actually are allowed to get it for so. so we don't repeat the situation like in Milan. This whole nationality was cut out. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, the problem is, like, who would do it? Like, we don't have anybody that specialized in doing that type of thing. There, maybe it will be the person that's helping organize with Mania. Maybe she can help do that. I wrote lots of letters to the United States Embassy for scholars. Um, like I worked a lot of extra hours trying and it just didn't really pan out to anything. And I know the local organizing teams often did, like for, um, in Israel, for example, that team did that sort of connecting, liaising with their local governments. And they did a really as good a job, I think, as they could have in helping people get them. This is definitely something that the organizing team from the media have responsibility in. And a lot of work around the time with the foundation and possibly the local chapter work to liaise with the local government to ensure the visa situation is improved or visas get given. And at the end of the day, it's the local host government that issues the visa via the embassy, but the embassy take order from the local government. So it's the truly um, organized. Now, we have 10 minutes left uh, to lunch. And uh, I have some more um, things, uh, uh, topics on my list uh, we wanted to discuss. Um, uh, I know them. Um, I wanted to discuss the composition and the election process for selecting the scholarship committee. So, yes. um, if you're okay with that, that um, or uh, whether we should change something, um, um, how the committee uh, can improve cooperation with the chapters um, that allocate their own Wikimedia scholarships and the communication with local communities, um, how to motivate scholarship uh, recipients to share their Wikimedia experiences with them. Uh, do you want to pick one or um, do you want to tell us uh, anything about it? Or as for us in Austria, we have to submit uh, a report about our experience before receiving the money for the hotel costs. Oh wow, so you're reimbursed for the hotel? Yeah. <laughs> but of course if you're from uh, another part of the world and you simply do not have the money to pre-fund it, you, it's, it's impossible to, to urge somebody to pay for the hotel at first and then months later to get the money. One thing that we have done, that's interesting, one of the things that, so every year I send in a survey to all the people that got scholarships, and most actually respond, because I think people are grateful, like they're not like, oh, I just got a free trip, you know, so they'll respond and get their, you know, great things or whatever, and then some of them give really detailed accounts of their experiences, and then so one year I actually followed up on some with some of them and helped do bios and things like that, um, but we get some information that way, so that's, so that's sort of like report, but not as official, but that's interesting that you guys do uh, Germany has uh, started this year uh, the last of initiatives um, with chapter village and with uh, scholarship uh, recipients who are supposed to uh, carry small video cameras to, to ah. take pictures of the camera um, to block an hour block and to ride an hour German side post. Um, we are on extra. Uh, uh, page for the uh, Wikimedia uh, 
block chapters with their own process. The other chapters in Austria um, and Germany, um, these applicants uh, went through our process, yeah. so we scored them. And, uh, but the foundation wouldn't award any scholarships to, to people from yeah. Austria or Germany, for so example. Yeah. Well, that's right. It's, we, d we agreed so to do. Austria and the other chapters said, okay, this there's a committee that's already rating these things, and they are diverse. They're from areas of the world, so they they would have more of a holistic perspective. And so they asked us to do it. It is up to the chapters how they can do the scholarships. Some could join the foundation scholarship from the main scholarship committee. And then the scores get sent over in the case of you which have to be on requested the application details except which you by applying the agree to share that information with the chapter. And then using the scores but also adding in our own criteria how important they are with our own chapter, for example, then we decide on to discuss about it. So it depends on very much which chapter you're talking about. So in, in our case, did the committee make it with the final decision or? The local chapter makes the final. Oh. The committee said, okay, here's the 20 names and here's the ranking. And so, and almost always the chapters would, if they had one of the committee scores, they would just take the committee. Mostly so that way they don't have to get in fights. They can say, oh, it's committee. Like, we don't do it. Germany, for example, then decided when they saw the score, at least I pushed them, um, to, to um, Give some more uh, scholarships, and uh, as far as I know, the UK decided uh, not to fund these people who already had a scholarship. Did did not, year. Did did full scholarship. The UK did not fund anyone this year who had received scholarship to attend last year, despite them scoring higher. But that, that was their own decision, and in the uh, Media Foundation Scholarship Committee. Uh, uh, we decided case by case, so we, we took the first one and we decided uh, on this company in uh, the fifth or sixth place uh, uh, whether they should go or all the uh, ones with the lowest scores, but we have a different experience on that. Uh, I can't be there. What, one thing we did this year was to get all the German speaking send it to all three German yeah. chapters. So I got my uh, yeah. scholarship from Wikipedia Germany already and then I received an email from Switzerland yeah. saying yeah. that I don't get a scholarship. Yeah, me too. But I don't have any association with Switzerland whatsoever, but they received all of them. Yeah. yeah. We tried to coordinate that and I talked to all of the, the uh, responsible person in the chapters but We'll try if, to they, if they do right, like that, happen. they cannot change it. What happened was this, each individual chapter gave us their criteria. So for Germany, it was, we, I think it was just only German, people from Germany. People, uh, living in Germany. people living in Germany. And for Switzerland, they said, we will take anybody that edits in Italian, anybody that edits in German, anybody that edits French. in French. And so this is really broad. So they actually have lots and lots of people from different places in the world. But it should have been coordinated that you only received one email. On, only at the end of the email you recognize that it's not that your application that you already uh, grant that was already funded is rejected. That's yeah, right. that's, that's really shocking. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. That was the complication of the chapter coordination. We need to get tighter on that. It's hard, yeah, as you said, it's 
not really us that are like at least for me, not really me that does it, but it shouldn't you shouldn't get too emails so it's so confusing. Are you okay with this scholarship committee? Um, um, the, the people inside are should there be more people um, to reduce the workload and to increase the well, I think it's if you need more people without sites committee, we need to be more work because then you have to coordinate yourself yeah. and, uh, and get to a final agreement uh, and there will be more opinions. Um, yeah, so that's part of the really challenge take of that. Time so the committee so will be on the air or is it a new committee, committee this next year? I think there should be a new committee every year. I think it should be every two years. Or <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be rolling. What because there is a learning curve. Should it be a lot quite useful that at least I was on the last year and it's kind of Yeah, this year you might be the only one. Yeah, that was lots of reasons. Yeah, that's one one issue I raised was that people in the scholarship committee are not allowed to apply for scholarship. Uh, I thought about, uh, I don't know how many volunteers uh, showed up, um, but I, yeah. I so in, initially did not volunteer for the scholars because I, but at the time I was working for the PPE case, I said, I'm yeah. like, I want to go to Hong Kong, I yes. might have Yeah, but that reduces the, the, the number of volunteers who will uh, stand up uh, uh, willing to help the committee. Only people from uh, richer chapters in IKK or generally to us uh, and the other ones, for example, the Indian no, guy. What, what about you make it that some, some, all members of the community automatically get a scholarship because then uh, there's no bias and and, um, and nobody would say, okay, but you vote for yourself. And, you know, at least if you establish a secondary yeah. application, of getting into that committee and that yeah. group. Well, I'm the best developer <laughs> okay. committee for the committee. And then you have a committee for the yeah. committee. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's 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 problem. problem. I mean, the, the more so the 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 for the committee that you have, you, yeah. you, you make a vote and you get three years and all that. Yeah, we actually, I mean, we did talk about that, yeah. For, we tossed it around with and decided well, with a lot of scholarship. Work. But often the people that need a scholarship need it because they need yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Well, it's one o'clock, so it is lunchtime. Um, it's photo time. Yeah, there's a spot, uh, and I'll create, I'll update it to you, but on that we have a space for scholarships. And so if you are, if anybody is really interested in continuing the conversation, um, I'll put up a link to it on the, the submissions page and you can carry it on there. Or email. Thank you for your time and your ideas. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Oh.
Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah thank you. This was good. Thank you for organizing. Yeah, I just want to say that it's a really good idea to discuss these topics more than they have Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I was really happy that uh, yesterday they discussed for the very first time at all the, the, the whole concept of Wikimania and Wikimania. Yeah, yeah, how was that? I couldn't go. Yeah, Did, you couldn't have I had a different um, it was uh, much less controversial than it could have been Good. because the first uh, hour was filled with a, with a boring. Uh, uh, oh, do we have to turn? Oh, I don't know. But I with a very do. boring uh, presentation about how fun it was organizing Wikimedia um. by the Israeli and then the uh, American chamber. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah.